called Relationships Rehab, right? And today we're supposed to be talking about love or lust part two, but it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day, right? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my mama. So I want to give a shout out to all the mothers. I would play Tupac right now, but, you know, I would get some people would write me emails. So I, write, I can't play Tupac, you know, but uh, one of my favorite Mother's Day songs is that is the Tupac, you know, the, the Dear Mama song. Um, I'm grateful my Puerto Rican queen is with the Lord. You know, she I don't have her with me. If you have your, your mother, I, I encourage you to, to create memories on purpose, take pictures, make videos, be goofy, be funny. Um, just I am very grateful to my mother. I'm grateful for my grandmother. I'm grateful for my spiritual mother. I, I'm grateful. I have a lot of different mothers. I'm grateful for all the mothers out there. All right. Um, if you're a mother, uh, some people are stepmothers, spiritual mothers, godmothers. Wh however, whatever role you play as a mother, thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Um, if we were in church in person, I'd give you a gift. <laughs> but we're not. So I, uh, maybe uh, maybe we could set something up for, for Father's Day. <laughs> no, just kidding. So if we were in service in person, I'd give you a gift. Um, maybe we could do something uh we could, we could send you an e-gift. We'll see what we can do. We're working on some stuff. But okay, so because it's Mother's Day, I'm going to do Love or Loss Part 2 next week. Okay? Uh, we'll talk about, we'll go back to the, we're going to take a commercial break from the relationship series. Don't don't tune me out. We're going to talk about some, I always have to count, M-O-T-H-E-R, six principles, all right? Six principles. I, I'm going to speak to mothers, but so here's what I want to do. In the recovery house of worship, we want to help everyone to grow to spiritual maturity, right? I promise you, and nobody get offended, but I promise you that spiritual immaturity is the is the exact nature of a lot of Christians' issues, right? Spiritual immaturity. So what we want to do, we want to help every believer, every Christian in the recovery house worship to grow up, to grow spiritually, to understand that as you grow spiritually, that's going to impact your mental health. As you grow spiritually, it's going to impact your emotional health. As you grow spiritually, it's going to impact your financial health. As you grow spiritually, it's going to... the same way addiction and the flesh, all right, impacts every area of our lives, your relationship with Jesus Christ can impact every area of your life. I'm not going to say it does, because for many, it doesn't. We want to help you to grow to spiritual maturity, to, to go from self-centeredness to God-centeredness, all right? To break free from the triangle of self-obsession, resentment, anger, and fear. To go from taking, 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 to giving, giving, giving. To, to go from demanding that you be understood to being a person that understands. We, we want you to grow in Christ-likeness, to grow like Christ. Uh, I'll give you a, a quick story that's, you know, will probably be in there anyway. So we want to help you grow. I want to help you grow up. So today is Mother's Day. We want all the mothers in the recovery house of worship. If you're a godmother, stepmother, spiritual mother, if you if you got a, uh, if you, you know, some woman, animals are like children. If you just got a dog, that's your baby. God bless you. I'm, I'm not mad at you. All right. I'm not mad at you. Um, some people are mothering, mothering other people's children. God bless you. Thank great grateful for you. So I'm gonna share, okay. I'm gonna share on Mother's Day. I'm gonna share on Mother's Day a message, an acronym for mother. And but I'm speaking to the mothers. We want every mother to be able to, to for example, the M is to for meditate, right? We're supposed to be meditating. What does it mean to so the O is for obedience? And we'll get into all that. But what I'm saying is that the message for the mothers applies to everybody, everybody, okay. Um, we're going to break down the word mother and we're going to get into it. I was looking at some scriptures that are pretty interesting. I was always looking at the, I was looking at the history of mothers. I, I don't got time to get into it, but, um, what I, what I will say is that there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that God refers to or has motherly connotations. All right. Isaiah 66, 13. If you're taking notes, Isaiah 66, 13, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. So God is saying, as one whose mother comforts, I'm going to comfort you. So that's a motherly comfort. God, you know, we know God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. As a mother, I'll give you another one, all right? Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she 
should have no compassion on the son of her womb. Even these may forget, yet I will not forget. So like a mother who cannot forget her nursing child, God is not going to forget you. If you're wayward, if you're watching this on one of the groups or you're on YouTube and you're, and you're the prodigal son and you're backslidden and you're realized, God has not forgotten about you. God loves you. You know, that's Isaiah 49, 15. Very powerful. Okay. Uh, I'll give you one more. Galatians 4, 19. There's many other ones, but Galatians 4, 19. My little children for whom I'm go I am again in anguish of childbirth. My little children. All right, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth, or a mother's giving birth, anguish, until Christ is formed in you. And, you know, God wants us. So those are verses where God is, he gives his motherly uh, uh, um, characteristics for those who are, all right. So there's many scriptures, you know, that we can go to. But I want to, I got six points I got to give you, and I got 40 minutes, all right. So this is probably not going to work out. And I got to go back to relationship rehab next week. So I got to do it today. All right. So so when I think about recovery, I was mothers. You know, I, I was this this message about we need to we need to teach our mothers. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a great person to you utilize. There's many great people to utilize. I'm just going to go straight into the acronym because I, I don't got there's many wonderful mothers in the Bible, many barren women that give God gives a miracle. And they give birth. Just recently, one of the things that we deal with a lot is uh Ladies, try, you know, couples trying to get pregnant. They have a lot of time getting pregnant. There's hope, you know, just hold on. Keep going through the process. Uh, Mark and Agnes from California just had a baby. They went through a long process. Uh, um, uh, there was a, a brother, Pastor Irwin and Melissa, who were trying to have babies for a long time. Now they got two beautiful kids growing up. You know, don't give up hope. Keep, keep going. Keep praying. God's timing is essential. It's not when you want it. So that was something that, you know, God put on my heart. There's hope. Hold on. Keep on. All right. So we want all the, the mothers in the recovery house of worship. In fact, we want every member in recovery house of worship, right? From, from the children to the teenagers, to the single, to the married. We want everybody to, to be able to embrace these characteristics. And, and what are those characteristics? I, I'm glad you asked. Okay. Um, that we're going to break down mother. We want every mother, somebody's unmuted, Gladys. We want every mother, all right, to be able to understand that we have to be Christian woman, right? Your mother, but we want everybody to be able to meditate. Meditate. And if you're in recovery, it's, we're supposed 11 step prayer and meditation. So we're going to talk about meditating for a moment. And what it means, when I say meditate as a Bible-believing Christian, I mean to meditate on God's Word, specifically, practically, clearly, you know, meditate on God's Word, all right? To read God's Word, Joshua 1.8 is my favorite scripture for meditation, Joshua 1.8. It says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Right, meditate. So, but why do you want me to keep this book of the law always on our list and meditate so that you may be careful to do everything in it? Then you will be prosperous and successful. How many of you want to be prosperous and successful? All right, so, so, so here the scriptures telling, check it out. Any mother out there, right? Any member out there, the Bible says, Joshua 1 a keep this book of the law always. Somebody say, always, always. On your lips, sing it, speak it, you know, pray it, talk it, teach it. Just keep the word of God always on you. Sing it, mule over it, repeat it, write some scripture, memorize it. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it, day over it. All right, mule over it, consider it, read it slowly, read it 50 times, you know, go over it. All right. And it says, so that you may be careful to do everything on it. Now, here's a big problem. We, we, the O is for obedience. We'll get it. But too many Christians know the word of God, can quote the word of God, read the word. They do the first part, but they don't live the word of God. And I, I got to promise you and explain to you, it's worse for you who know the word and don't live it than those who don't know it and don't live it. Because it hurts when you don't know. Oh, but how it hurts when you do know. All right. And so we want to just meditate on the word. Ladies, mothers, meditate. Pray the scriptures over your children. You know, write it down. Put scriptures on your wall. I remember Louisa had scriptures on her. On her. Man, put scriptures up. Psalms 48.9 says this. We should meditate on his unfailing love. 
consider, reflect, right? Oh, think about God's unfailing love, how he's been there over and over and over, how he's always showed up, how he's always made a way, how you're so unfaithful, Raymond, but God has been so faithful. Just man, meditate, sing songs of worship, right? Get scriptures that focus on your God, is his, un, his stubborn, unfailing, crazy love for us. Right, that he loves you, that you're the apple of his eye, that he has his hand upon your life, and you can run nowhere where his love can't find you. All right, and so it says Psalms 48 9 to you know meditate on his unfailing love. Philippians 4 8, this is a good verse for everybody. Philippians 4 8 says this finally, brethren, whatever is true, somebody put true in the chat in the chat. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, put honorable in the chat. Whatever is right, put right in the chat. Whatever is pure, put pure in the chat. Whatever is lovely, put lovely in the chat. Whatever is of good repute, put good repute in the chat. What If there's anything excellent, put excellent in the chat. And if anything worth of praise, put worthy of praise, put that in the chat. Dwell on these things. Dwell on the, it says this. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, whatever, if there's anything of excellence, if, if anything of, that's worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Let me tell you something about meditation. Many people know how to worry about the bad things, the bills. I can't believe she didn't say hello. I can't believe they did. I, oh, they did this. They didn't hug me. They didn't say, they didn't text me. They took you know, we, were, we meditate on the wrong things. People say, I don't know how to meditate. You probably meditate better than you think, but you meditate on the wrong things. You uh, Meditation is focused attention. And too many of us have focused attention on the wrong things. And we learn whatever you focus on, whatever you focus on, whatever you focus on gets bigger. As a rule, it expands. If you focus on the good, the good expands. If you focus on the negative, the negative expands. Whatever you focus on gets bigger. All right? So Philippians 4 eight. if you're married, Ladies, right? Whatever, don't don't let the devil make you the accuser of the brethren with your husband. Husbands, don't make the devil the accuser. Don't do the devil's job. Don't do the devil's job. Focus on what's good, what's true, what's honorable, what's noble. Speak life. This is a great verse for relationships. Philippians 4 8. So we need mothers, we need members, or how people that meditate on the scripture, dwell on the good things. Focus on God's, how awesome he is. So many of us, even in recovery, the disease, the enemy, the devil, the flesh, we're sharing our problems, sharing our problems. Share. We get to the point where we're not sharing for relief no more. We're not sharing for solution no more. We're sh the, the enemy got to share to compound the hurt, to compound the pain, right? You, you, we don't even know. You could be sharing backwards. Oh, man, how about that? Focus, meditate on the good stuff. I'm not saying don't share what you're going through. I didn't say that. This is on YouTube. I don't say I said that because I didn't say that. I said, dwell on the good things. Too many of us say, oh, my problems are so big. Oh, my issues are so deep. Oh, no, focus on the good. Focus on how great your, your God is, how awesome your God is. He The promises in the word of God. God is not a man that will lie. Focus on what God says. No matter what you're going through, keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes promised. Embrace the promise of God's word. You know, just... just all right, so we got to meditate, all right? If you can master meditation, check it out. If you can master meditation, you can master your thoughts. That's that's so powerful. Man, if you can learn how to focus and fo practice, and if you practice, I'm in the 12-step fellowship, and there's a line that says, skilled people were not born with their skills, right? We got to practice. And what you practice... Practice meditating. Practice focusing on the scripture. Practice reading God's word. Practice singing God. Practice focusing. Change your perspective. You can if you can if you can master meditation. You can master your. You can tell your thoughts what to consider. You can renounce thoughts. You can rebuke thoughts. You can not agree with thoughts. You can make yourself focus on the good. Make yourself focus on the positive. Make yourself focus on the. You you guys with me? Don't let so, somebody. I was hanging out with Wallace, right? And Wallace said something. I'm not gonna say what he said because I didn't ask for permission. But Wallace said something that I thought was interesting. And I said, Wallace, you know, somebody told me something once that was interesting. They said, Don't be so open minded that your brain falls out your head, right? I was like, Man, that's pretty good. Man, don't be so open. You know, what about this? What listen, focus, make your mind right. You know, that anytime you have thoughts.
that oppose the will of God, we got to tack, cast those down. Take those thoughts that, that oppose the will of God and tear those babies down. Don't let them don't let them build into an obsession. So we got to learn how to meditate. Practice reading the word. Get scriptures that speak to your situation. If you if you have a, like man, if you have problems with money and, 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 and your bills and and your rent and clothes, and if you're having a, if you're really going through a financial storm, then memorize Matthew six thirty three. I'm not even gonna tell you what it is, but just walk, let me give you the address. Memorize Matthew six thirty three. If you if you're worried about money and rent and bills, Matthew six thirty three. You understand? If you struggle with temptation, different temptations to act out, the character defects, whatever the temptation might be. Some people might be to eat a chocolate, gamble, lustful thoughts, pride, gossip, whatever it might be. Memorize 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Memorize 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Those, they will help you in these things and you can mem meditate on them. They'll edify and fortify you and they will dig into your soul. And sometimes we got these lies that the word of God needs to uproot these lies. But it, meditation, reading the word, singing the word, speaking the word, memorizing the word. Sometimes you got to tell, you got to talk to yourself. I know people say, no, no, you got to tell yourself the word. When your head is bugging out, you're not going to make it. Oh, I can't. Remember. Where is God? You know, you got to tell yourself he will never leave me nor forsake me. That's what Hebrew says. I'm not going to go by how I feel. I, I'm doing a lot better than I feel. I'm going to, I'm the head and not the tail, no matter how I feel. You got to speak the word of God to yourself. That's why we meditate. And then we meditate. Why? So we can do what it says. The Bible says that and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth. There's components. There's conditional promises. You got to do your part. We can't expect God to do everything. Right. OK, just pray, God. You know, my favorite little illustration, because I'm not that deep, is you get a, you buy some bacon from the store and you get a dozen eggs and you get a tomato and you get some onion and you can pray for omelet all you want. In the name of Jesus, I pray for an omelet. I, I plead the blood and I, I omelet. No, no, there's not going to be no omelet. So you break the eggs, put it in the pan, cut the tomato. But you got to do your part. Right. God will move the mountain, but you got to bring the shovel. Hello, somebody. You, you, you got to do your part. Okay, so that's why we meditate. We don't meditate in our scripture just to know it. James says, then you deceive yourselves. You're not doers. All right, you hear us, but not do it. We, it says very clearly, <coughs> right, that we keep the law on our lips day and night, always meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful, be careful to do everything written in it. Why do I? Then you'll be prosperous and successful. When I preach that, I love the scripture. I, I want to be prosperous and successful. So just live out the word. Learn the word. Live the word. That's what faith is about. Not your feelings. Not your circumstances. Faith is living out the word of God. No matter what you're going through. No matter what those people say. No matter how you feel. No matter what you think. No matter what's going on in your life. Faith is li living out the word of God. Head, heart, heart hands proper meditation okay we got to move on i got more but so the oh no, we'll never get out of it okay the the o is for obedient all right and mother the m is for meditate the o is for obedient we just talked about living out the word of god okay mothers who not only read and meditate on the scriptures but mothers who are obedient to the word of god we're looking for mothers and recover that are going to learn the word take time to learn the word and then make a commitment to live the word obedience there's listen i promise you you can cry you can pray you can take the pastor for sushi you can do no there's no substitute for obedience there's no substitute for obedience all right the, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know what faith looks like? It looks like obedience. All right. It doesn't matter how you was raised, Raymond. It doesn't matter what you was taught by your uncle. It doesn't matter what happened to you as a kid, Raymond. It doesn't matter your culture, Raymond. It doesn't matter what kind. Listen, uh, obedience. We need women who are mothers who are spiritually mature, who are living out the word of God, that they're speaking life to their husbands, speaking life to their children, that they're fighting the devil for their families. And they're obedient. They got the armor of God and they're living out the word. All right. Spiritual maturity. Check it out. Very important. Spiritual maturity is not measured in how high you can jump. Right. Check it out. How high you jump, but in how straight you walk in obedience. 
There's a lot of Christians that think I can, they get their worship on and they think, oh, they, they do the James Brown. I like the James Brown. I do the James Brown too sometimes. You you give me, a, well, I was in the, my first Mother's Day without my mother, I was in the Bishop's house and the Potter's house and I was dancing like James Brown. But that's not that's not my measure of obedience. How, how much I cry or how loud I sing. Oh, my, the measure of my obedience is not, check it out, I love this. It's not how high you jump, but how straight you walk in obedience. All right. So we got to walk in obedience. Obedience does not make God love you more. Check it out. Obedience does not make God love you more. Obedience demonstrates that you love God. You got that? Obedience doesn't, does, doesn't make God love me more. God can't love me anymore. His love is, is his agape love is complete. All right. And there's, there's nothing I can do bad that he'll love me any worse. And there's not only any, any lesser. And nothing I can do good. He'll love me. Obedience doesn't make God love me more. Obedience demonstrates that I actually love God. Jesus said, if you love me, you obey my commands. All right. Okay. Very good. James 12, 22 and 25. I refer to it. James 22 to 25. 120 says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. How many want to be blessed in what they do? Right? Some of us are not blessed in what we do because we're, com we're, we're compromising Christians. We're convenient Christians. That's why we're not being blessed in what we do. I don't know about you, but if you want to be prosperous, you want to be blessed, is this here are the instructions, right? Deuteronomy, Moses told the people, yo, bless if you obey, bless if you do God's will, you're taught if you do your will, right? Self-will versus God will. In our DNA, check it out, in our flesh, in our DNA, we have self-destruction in our DNA attached to our self-will. That's deep. That whenever you manipulate yourself and then find the people that will co-sign your manipulation of yourself and compromise God's truth, you're going to suffer. You're going to cry, and the people around you are going to cry. Why? Because you chose to do your will, Raymond. You chose to do your will. So, Louise is being funny. Count your blessings, not your calories. All right. Check it out. It says this. All right. I, I, the, the T. M, M is for meditate. The O is for obedience. The T is for teach. We need mothers that teach the word of God. All right. Mothers who teach their children the word, teach their children spiritual disciplines. Mothers who teach their children how to pray. Mothers who teach their children how to worship. Mothers who teach their children how to fast. Mothers who teach their children how to meditate. Mothers who demonstrate before their children to put God first. Show your children what it looks like to be a, 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 a healthy, Bible-believing, Christ-centered Christian. We got too many Christians that are hyper-spiritual, hypocritical, judgmental, self-righteous, and their kids are not going to follow them. Right? Do you love your children? Model our Christianity for them. The same grace God gave you, give to your children. The same love God gave you, give. But the, the same way Jesus did the will of his father, no matter the price, do the will of your father. Teach them how to worship God. Teach them by what they see. Teach them by what you model. That goes back to your obedience. Are you with me? Okay. I like this. In 1 Timothy 1.5, 1 Timothy 1.5. Paul writes to Timothy, and here's what he says. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. That's legacy, baby boy. That's legacy right there. How many grandmothers and mothers who poured into us, who were men, they, they, they were always on their knees praying, crying out to God, speaking the word of God. We, we have a legacy of faith, some of us, right? I had a praying mother. Uh, she had three drug addict children. 
One child died. You know, she has four children. One died, three children. I had a mother that cried out to God, no matter how bad it got, cried out to God, cried out to God, cried out to God. She said, Jesus can do it. Please, Jesus, get a hold of my children. Please, Jesus. I had a mother that, that, that modeled prayer for me. You know, I, I wish I had time to tell you, but I, I'll give you a, a quick illustration. You, you ever seen those bells in, in, in the churches that have the, 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 the rope? And when you pull the rope, it rings the bell up there. You ever seen those toes? Somebody give me thumbs up if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, very good. So my mother, she had three, she had, me personally, right? She would, that's what prayer is. Prayer, the bell tower. Thank you, Danny. My mother would go and pray and grab that rope and ring the bell. She'd go, God, I pray for my son. God, my son, the Rastafarians are trying to kill him. God, they shot him. God, they stabbed him. God, he's in jail. She would ring the bell, ring the bell, ring the bell, ring the bell, ring the bell. God, go get my son. Ring the bell, ring the bell. God got so tired of hearing that bell ring in heaven. She said, listen, go get that girl's son. Go get her son. She will not stop. I had a mother who persevered in prayer. She, she rang the bell. She prayed and prayed and prayed until God got a hold of her baby boy. Right? We need to lead by example. We want to teach our children. Very important. All right? Instead of buying our children, instead of, you know, all the things that they never had, let's teach our children all the things we never were taught. Oh. Instead of buying our children all the things we never had, how about teaching our children the things we were never taught? Think about that, okay? The material wears out, but the godly knowledge never fails. It literally lasts all eternity. I got my kids nice stuff. I'm not against getting your kids nice, but too many parents. I want, I want to buy my. They never, I never had that. Never had that. Yeah, listen, don't materialism is not the way of God. Teach your children the things of God. Okay, speak life to your children. You know, speak the word of God. All right. Deuteronomy 6, this is the ESV, 6, 6 and 7. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7 says this. And these words that I command you today, you shall they shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Listen, mothers, listen, members, listen, everybody. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. Speak the word of God to your children. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Give the put the word of God. Pastor Ed Castro taught me this. His mother would put worship music. His mother would pray the word over them. His mother would lay. I started laying hands on my children and, and speaking the word of God over them. And just listen, putting on the music, putting on the Bible, listen to the Bible. Let, let it get inside of them. One day it'll come out of them. Okay, we got to go. All right, there's so much more. All right. Exit. Let me tell you one of the scriptures that every parent, you, let me tell you, every parent should have this scripture memorized and should teach it to your children. You ready? You ready? A, a parents out there, you ready? Put ready in the chat if you're ready. No, nah, you're not sitting ready. I'm preaching. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm going to have a heart attack here. You don't look ready. Okay? I'm sitting down. I'm going to have a heart attack. Okay? All right. So this is every parent should to know this scripture and teach this to the, and, and you're going to know why in a minute. All right? Exodus 2012. Exodus 2012. The New Living Translation. Exodus 2012. If you're a parent, write that down. Here's what it says Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Right? Honor your father and mother. So you can live a long life blessed in the land that God wants to give you. Too many of us, if you do a fourth and fifth step, we need to go make amends to our parents. Whatever they did, we can't justify or rationalize. But what we did, we need to take ownership of. Right? That's I don't even really go there, but that's some serious stuff. We have to go. We have to honor our mother and father. I'm in recovery. I'm a Christian. I know better. My son said he's going to live forever. You see? You better don't get smart. Stay the way you are. Listen, my son, honor your father and your mother. It says father and mother, all right? So check it out. There's a good chance, all right? 
No, I don't want to say that. All right, let's move on. How much time I got? The, all right, M is for meditate. The O is for obedience. The T is for teach. The H is for humility. Humility. All right. We want to raise up mothers who are humble, not proud or arrogant, trying to be better than, than, than all the competitive, you know, trying to be better than this catch up with Joseph's and competition. No, don't, don't. Mothers who are humble. James 4, 6. You know what the Bible says in James 4, 6? God gives grace to the humble. More grace, all right? God gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. James 4, 6, all right? We need to learn how to be humble. If you're blessed, right? If you're, if you're like me, I'm blessed. I'm living the dream. I got incredible people. You know, I'm just blessed. Stay humble. It's not because of how great you are. It's how great God is. It's not how wonderful you are. It's how wonderful God is. If you got the ability to communicate, if you can memorize scripture, if God has given you the ability to, he's hidden the mysteries of the gospel, he's, whatever gifts you got, they're gifts given to you by God. Do not take credit for what God has done. Stay humble. All right, I'm going to move on. The E is for endure. Let me just say one more thing about humility. We need mothers that are meek. You know what meekness is? Power under control. We need members that have, that have power under control, all right? The E is for endure. Endure. We need mothers who endure. Mary, the mother of Christ, she had to endure, man. She went through it. How many know what Mary went through? Mary had to endure. To endure, man, is to continue moving forward, to, to handle hardships. It's going to get rough sometimes. Sometimes our children, we raise them up and, you know, just things happen. You got to endure. You got to endure. There's a great scripture on endurance. I'm, I'm going to give it to you right now. One of my favorite scriptures, right, endurance. Let me just see if I can find I think it's 1 Peter 5.10. 1 Peter 5.10. Let me see if I find it. All right. First Peter, I think, let me see what it is real quick. Endure. Endure means to last, to last, all right, to hold on up on the pain, to hold on on the pain, all right, to continue, to continue in the same state in spite of pain or hardship, that's what endure means, all right? To keep on keeping on, to live through, to stick it out. We need mothers, we need members that endure, that you're gonna, that you keep on seeking the Lord no matter what you go through. You keep on, you know, I, I was talking to somebody when my son died and I went to, you know, it's with tears in my eyes, it's hard to keep your eyes focused on the Lord, but focus on the Lord. With the devil attacking your mind, it's hard to meditate. It's, you gotta endure, you gotta fight your way through during hardship, during difficult times, during dark times, you got to endure. You got to keep on worshiping, keep on reading, keep on praying, keep on serving. One of the most important words in the 12 steps for people like me is the word continue. Oh, that's a good, that's, that's a word for somebody. Why right? continue, man? Don't let nothing stop you. Keep doing what's working. Keep serving. Keep worshiping. Keep showing up. Keep reading. Keep praying. Keep, continue. Endure means to continue. All right. The R is for repent. I'm coming, I'm coming. The R is for repent. All right? The R is for repent. I don't know if I gave you that scripture on, on endurance. All right. I'll give you another scripture I like. Before I go to repent, 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, 4, 7 and 8, Paul the Apostle. Paul says this, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He endured. He endured. I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I've kept the faith. Verse 8 says, now there's in store for me the crown of righteousness 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but all those who also endure. Endure, endure. Don't be a, a fair weather Christian. Don't be a fair weather wife. Don't be a fair weather mother. Don't be a fair weather member. Don't be a fair weather man. You know, endure, man. Worship God. Stay faithful. Keep on keeping on. No matter the opposition, no matter what the devil throws your way, no matter the disease of addiction, no matter who comes, no matter who goes, keep pursuing God. Keep chasing after God. Keep seeking out. Listen, you're not going to find nobody, go nowhere. More more important in pursuing and enduring whatever you got to endure to get deeper into the presence of God. There's nothing like it. The Lord, nobody's going to love you. Nobody's going to validate you. Nobody's going to satisfy you. Nobody's going to affirm you. Nobody's going to fill you. That You can go, that no one else has the words of life. Endure like a good soldier. Endure. All right. R is for repent. R is for repent. All right. You might be here and you're an authentic woman of God and you've repented and you've turned, you know, you might be, but someone, you're going to continue to make mistakes, right? You, that's why we need a 10 step. You're going to, you're going to, you might have a bad attitude. I don't know. I don't know what it is to have a, a, a menstrual cycle, right? Some say that it's that when women have their menstrual cycle, that they're hard. I don't know nothing about it. All right. But it, it's possible that doing once a month, you're more vulnerable and, and more, and, 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 you know, your hormones and, and, and now Women are going through menopause and they're going, you know, all types of stuff are happening, right? You're going to have hard times. If you're married to someone like me, oh, you then you're going to, you, you're going to, man, you're going to say some stuff. You're going to do something. You're going to have to repent. You understand? And so we want to make, understand that you don't just repent once. All right. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to blow it. You're going to make, you're going to make, unfortunately, you might make some decisions you're going to regret. All right. You might go to some things and you might not respond biblically all the time. I like what Joel 2.25 says. So I will restore you to the, I will restore to you the years the, the, the canker worm has eaten away. Right? That's repenting, looking at what, God, what you've been through, repenting, pursuing God, knowing that, listen, I'm going to repent. I like what Matthew says, continue to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. That's a good scripture. All right? Continue to produce fruit. In keeping with repentance, somebody write that down. All right. All right. So, Second Chronicles 740, 714. Everybody, this is a good verse. Second Chronicles 714. <clears throat> Look at what it says. This is a good 10-step verse, 11-step verse. My people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will hear their land. All right? If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Listen, don't justify your sin. Don't rationalize your sin. Don't minimize your sin. Don't compare your sin. If you know in the 10th step, if you take an inventory and you know you didn't respond in the way God wanted you to, if you know that you, you came, you had a shortcoming, you came short, from God's standards, you can repent and God will forgive you and God will bless your land. I know a lot of Christians who don't understand your God, he, the, where sin abounds grace even more. God loves you. He's never going to stop loving you. If, where you mess up, God already provided grace for you. The blood of Jesus has been shed. You're forgiven. You got to appropriate your forgiveness. You got to receive it. You got to confess your sin. You got to do that 10th step. You're with me. All right. But we, we, we got to learn how to repent. Too many of us, listen, if you messed up, I'm, a, I'm an adult. I think Gary's here with, 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 with Corey. We're adults, right? We're adults. We can't blame somebody else for what I, I did. I did that because you made me do it. No, I did that because I played myself. I chose wrong. I let my emotions get the best of me. I, I, I got heated in the moment. I lacked consequential thinking. I got, I got impulsive. I should have shut up, but I spoke, right? I, when we repent, we learn. I blew it. I messed up here. I got to learn from this. I don't want to be here again. I don't want to keep saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because that's, I don't want to be, you're a very sorry person. No, I want change. I want transformation. 
You understand? So it's very important that we repent. God will hear your land. God will forgive you. All right. That's mother. If I had to do an S, it would be spirit-filled. All right? Mother's Day. Mother's spirit-filled. Spirit-filled. If I had to do an S, it would be spirit-filled. The whole solution to our problem is in Galatians. I'll tell you, this is so offensive. All right? Galatians chapter 5. This is the solution to our problem. If we live according to the Spirit, that's our that's our solution. To live according to the Spirit. Live according to the, to the Spirit. If you live according to the Spirit, you will not give into the desires of your flesh. The Spirit is contrary to the flesh. So it's being spirit filled, right? That means what it means to be spirit filled. People, that means that you're you're you're, reading, you're meditating on the word, you're obeying what God reveals to you, right? You're living out the word of God. You're you're seeking the Lord. The Spirit of God is filling you based on your intimacy with the God, and you're making Christ directed decisions. Christ directed. That's spirit filled. It's not speaking in tongues. It's not you know yelling and screaming. It's not all. It's Spirit filled is being led by the Spirit according to the Word of God. Spirit filled means making decisions based on God's Word. Spirit fills me Christ directed decisions. That's spirit filled. All right. You know, we talked about maturity. Spiritual maturity is not about how, how you pr- much you pray. Spiritual maturity is based on your obedience. So, all right. So I, I'm, I got five minutes left. I, I want to. We want all the members of the Recovery House of Worship. This is Mother's Day, and I did the acronym for mothers. But we want everybody to listen. Meditate on God's word. Don't have. Don't. 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 Don't depend on somebody else's devotional time or Bible study time. What you get your own devotional time. You get your own Bibles. You know, learn the Bible. Spend time in the Word. Right. Ask God to give you the power to live out the word. We can't do it in our own strength. God will give you the power, the desire and the power to live out the word. The, God's will is found in God's word, and he'll give you his power to live it out. Obey the word of God. We All of us, we, we need to learn that we want to teach our children, teach our friends. You know how many people I get to teach the Bible? I sit down and I teach people different things, and we get to you know, teach it. Share, give it forward. Share with your children, share with your family. I got nieces and nephews and sisters, you know, I'm sharing all over the world with my family. I get to share, teach the word. Stay humble. That's one of the greatest things. I'm not a big shot. I'm not the great. I, listen, Jesus is the great I am. I'm a piece of garbage. I'm a dirty drug addict without the grace of God. I know my identity is in Christ. Outside of Christ, I'm nothing. Outside, I don't deserve nothing. It's Christ. He died on the cross for my sins. He, he, he died the death that I deserve so I can live the life that I never imagined possible. And so as we close, it all begins with surrendering your life to Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins, understanding that you've been living your own way or living according to Hollywood TV or living according to the, your culture, the Puerto Ricans or wherever you're from, living, and you've been living according to the world. And now you can say, you know what, I, I want to I live this thing out. I want to know the word of God. I want to, I want to know the truth so the truth can set me free. I want peace. I want joy. I want the fruit of the spirit. I want to be the conqueror. I want to be more than a conqueror. I want to live victoriously. You can do that by repenting. Say, my way doesn't work. My culture's way doesn't work. My country's way doesn't work. The world doesn't work. Jesus' way works. It's practical. It's powerful. And it's incredible. Jesus is a word. It's simple. Learn the word. Build a relationship, live out the word. It's very, very simple. I didn't say easy, very simple. So as we go, I want to give everybody the opportunity. Uh, I was four and a half years clean. 27 years ago, I surrendered my life. I repented of my sins. I realized that my way doesn't work. And the people who do things God's way, they're winning. I want to win. I was losing. So I said, you know what? I'm going to repent. I'm saying, God, I, I, you know, I don't want to do it my way no more. I help me to, you know, I, I pray. And so let me say what a, a simple prayer that can help you. It's not the words. It's not the prayer. It's the yielding and the repenting internally. It's understanding that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The wages of sin is death. We all have sin, all of us, all right? And, and that the wages of that sin is death. And Jesus came and paid the death penalty for us. 
He took our place. You did the crime. He did the time. You understand? He took our place on the cross and he exchanged our dirty sins for his righteousness. There was a great exchange on the cross. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, a relationship, not a, not our how, not Pastor Raymond, not a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you can see how much he loves you, that he has been watching over your life, your whole life, that he's been guiding you out of situations and making a way of escape. And that's why you're not dead. That's why you're not in prison. Jesus loves you. And he wants you to experience his love. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to reciprocate that with worship and gratitude. And you can live your, the most incredible life you ever imagined possible. He says you can live the abundant life that's promised in Christ. So here's the here's a prayer that I would say, repeat after me. It's not the words, it's internally, it's spiritual. All right, but here's the words. Because the Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe with your heart. Confess with your mouth that Christ is the Lord, that he was raised from the dead, and believe in your heart. It, with your mouth you confess, with your heart that you believe. Okay, so say something like this. You guys ready? Everybody pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I understand. I understand. You love me. You love me. You've been pursuing me. You've been pers you have a plan for my life. You know everything about me. You know everything about me. And you love me. And you love me. Today, I repent. I surrender. I need you. Take my will in my life. Show me how you want me to live. Teach me how to pray. Give me a hunger for your word. Mold me and shape me. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, have your way in, in my life. In my life, Amen. Let me pray for you guys, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray for all those out there who've heard this sermon and you've used these words, God, to pierce hearts. I pray that you would capture many, many souls, that many, many people would surrender their lives to you and repent. I pray transformation. I pray power. I pray deliverance. I pray freedom. I pray peace in the name of Jesus. I pray that you take people from being victims to being victorious, God, from going through trials and tribulations to being triumphant, oh God, from, from being a mess, God, and turning them into a message, God. I pray that you would move by your spirit. Fill them with your spirit, with your power, with your love, with your glory, God. Use them as trophies in your showcases so everyone can see what you can do in somebody's life, God. Bless everyone out there who said this prayer. Draw people to you that will surrender and repent, God, that will understand that you sent your one and only son, Jesus the Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, and he rose on the third day, defeating death, breaking the devil's back, and fulfilling the law, God atoning for our sins. God, I pray for revival in the recovery community. I pray for addicts and alcoholics and gambling addicts and, and God, workaholics and hoarders and food. I, I pray for revival in, in the 12-step community, God. Raise up generals, raise up soldiers in your army, God. And we're careful to give you and you alone all the glory and all the honor for you alone are worthy, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. And amen. 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 All righty. I love you guys. Um, there's no uh, sermon discussion today because it's Mother's Day. But I want to let everyone know that we're on Zoom every Sunday at 5 p.m. 336-927-5154. 336-927-5154. The password is 316-316. Join us on Zoom. Part two, Love of Lust, Relationship Rehab, next week, 5 p.m., Go to rhow.org to check out our weekly schedule for our Zoom meetings, in-person meetings. We want to embrace you. We want to love on you. We want to help you to grow. I'm Pastor Raymond Ramos. If I can serve you in any way, please feel free to reach out to me. Reach out to one of the leaders. We're, we're starting campuses in different parts of America, in different parts of England, and other parts of the world. If you want to be a part of the Recovery House of Worship and start a small group in, in your community so that people in recovery can come and learn how much God loves them and connect with us you reach out to me we're going to be doing announcements and we start a training i love you guys 
I'm praying for you all. Recovery House Worship, Pastor Raymond Ramos. In Jesus' name.